New information has just arrived from the Vatican. Sources claim that Pope Francis just revealed major information regarding the church leadership, who might take on the monumental responsibility of leading the church. And what did Pope Francis reveal about his vision for the next era of Catholicism? Let's unravel the story together. The stage. Breaking news from the Vatican arrived just five minutes ago. Pope Francis has just broken his silence on a topic that has captivated Catholics and non-Catholics alike, the future leadership of the Catholic Church. Speculation has swirled for months. And now the Pope himself has spoken, addressing the whispers about his health and the looming question of succession. This moment is significant not just for the Church's 1.3 billion members, but for the world at large. As Pope Francis nears the 11th year of his papacy, questions about his physical health and energy to continue his demanding role have intensified. At the age of 87, he remains a powerful voice for unity, justice, and compassion. But even the most dedicated leader must prepare for the inevitable transition. Pope Francis's words carry tremendous weight in shaping the future of the Catholic Church, especially when it comes to identifying the values and qualities of his potential successor. His papacy has been marked by bold reforms and an unrelenting focus on inclusivity, humility, and outreach to the marginalized. His choice, or even his hints about the next leader, could determine how these priorities evolve or shift in the coming decades. At the center of this discussion are three influential cardinals, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, a seasoned diplomat and the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, a charismatic leader often referred to as Asia's Pope Francis, and Cardinal Peter Turkson, a trailblazer advocating for social justice in the Global South. Each of these figures represents a unique vision for the future of the Church, and their roles in Pope Francis's inner circle are undeniable. So who might the next Pope be? To find this out, we must first talk a bit more about Pope Francis's papacy, Pope Francis's vision for the Church's future. Pope Francis's papacy has been nothing short of transformative. From the moment he stepped onto the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica in 2013, asking for the world's prayers, he signaled a different kind of leadership, one rooted in humility and a profound desire to connect with people on a human level. Over the years, his actions have consistently emphasized inclusivity, compassion, and reform. One of Pope Francis's defining legacies is his relentless focus on inclusivity. He has sought to welcome people from all walks of life into the church, advocating for the poor, embracing different individuals, and fostering interfaith dialogue. His calls for understanding and unity have resonated globally, positioning the church as a bridge builder in an increasingly divided world. Beyond inclusivity, Pope Francis has emphasized humility. He famously chose to live in the modest Vatican guesthouse rather than the Grand Apostolic Palace, signaling a departure from the traditional opulence associated with the papacy. His actions have inspired a new generation of clergy and laity to embrace simplicity and service. His progressive stances, such as advocating for environmental stewardship through his encyclical Laudato Si and challenging global leaders on issues of inequality, have redefined the papacy for the modern era. Yet these bold moves have also sparked debates within the church, stressing the ongoing balance between tradition and reform. Despite his many achievements, Pope Francis faces a church grappling with significant challenges. Globally, church attendance has been on the decline, particularly in Europe and North America. The church must find ways to engage with younger generations, who often view religion as outdated or disconnected from their lives. Another pressing issue is the need to balance modernity with tradition. While many praise Pope Francis's progressive reforms, others within the church view them as a departure from core teachings. The next leader will need to navigate these tensions carefully, ensuring continuity while addressing the needs of an evolving world. All of this brings us to the question of succession. For Pope Francis, the topic is not just a matter of who will wear the white robes next, but how the church will continue to embody its mission in the face of modern challenges. Succession planning is a deeply spiritual and strategic endeavor, one that requires a clear vision of the church's future. In recent months, Pope Francis has hinted at the qualities he believes the next pope should possess. He has emphasized the need for a unifying figure who can build bridges, listen to the voices of the global south, and uphold the church's commitment to humility and pastoral care. With these priorities in mind, the focus shifts to key figures in the Vatican, leaders who have worked closely with Pope Francis and who embody different facets of his vision. From Cardinal Pietro Parolin's diplomatic brilliance to Cardinal Luis Tagle's ability to connect with youth and Cardinal Peter Turkson's advocacy for justice and climate action, each potential successor brings something unique to the table. As the world watches closely, 
Pope Francis's vision for the church's future provides a roadmap for what the next leader must strive to achieve. But who exactly are these individuals? The diplomatic powerhouse. Among the names that frequently emerge in discussions about the future of the Catholic Church, one stands out for his deep understanding of global affairs and his steady hand in navigating the complex world of diplomacy, Cardinal Pietro Parolin. As the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Parolin occupies a role of unparalleled influence within the Church. His work often happens behind the scenes, but his contributions are foundational to how the Vatican operates on the global stage. As Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Parolin functions as the Pope's right hand in matters of governance and diplomacy. This position is second only to the Pope in terms of importance within the Church's hierarchy, overseeing the Vatican's relationships with nations, international organizations, and other religious communities. The role demands not only a deep understanding of theology and church doctrine, but also a mastery of geopolitics and negotiation. Cardinal Parolin coordinates the work of Vatican embassies worldwide, facilitates dialogue with foreign leaders, and advises the Pope on international matters. Essentially, he is the Vatican's chief diplomat and strategist, ensuring that the church's voice is heard in the corridors of power worldwide. But what really sets him apart is his extraordinary diplomatic acumen, honed over decades of service to the Church. Born in 1955 in the small Italian town of Schiavon, Parolin entered the priesthood in 1980 and quickly gravitated toward the Vatican's diplomatic service. He studied at the prestigious Pontifical Ecclesiastical Academy and began serving in nunciatures, aka Vatican embassies, across the world, including Mexico, Nigeria, and Venezuela. His early assignments exposed him to the complexities of church-state relations and deepened his ability to mediate in politically charged environments. These experiences prepared him for increasingly influential roles within the Vatican, culminating in his appointment as Secretary of State in 2013, shortly after Pope Francis's election. Parolin's diplomatic brilliance shines through in his ability to engage with world leaders on contentious issues. Under his guidance, the Vatican has played a crucial role in advancing peace, defending human rights, and promoting religious freedom. For example, one of Cardinal Parolin's most high-profile accomplishments has been his leadership in negotiating the 2018 Vatican-China Agreement. This groundbreaking accord addressed the contentious issue of appointing bishops in China, seeking to reconcile the underground Catholic Church with the state-controlled Chinese Patriotic Catholic Association. While the agreement remains controversial, Parolin's role demonstrated his willingness to take bold steps to ensure the Church's presence in regions where it faces significant challenges. He has also been instrumental in fostering dialogue in conflict zones. From the Middle East to Latin America, he has consistently advocated for peace, urging nations to prioritize human dignity and justice. His efforts in Venezuela, for instance, showcased his commitment to diplomacy even in seemingly intractable situations, as he sought to mediate between the government and opposition during a period of profound political turmoil. In today's interconnected and often fractious world, the next Pope will need to address challenges that go far beyond the spiritual. Issues such as climate change, migration, religious persecution, and economic inequality require a leader who understands the intersection of faith and geopolitics. Cardinal Parolin's career exemplifies this rare combination of skills. One area where Parolin has excelled is fostering interfaith dialogue. He has worked tirelessly to improve relationships between the Catholic Church and other religious traditions, particularly Islam. His engagement with Muslim leaders has been crucial in promoting mutual understanding and cooperation, especially in regions where religious tensions run high. Moreover, Parolin has emphasized the Church's role as a moral voice in international institutions. He has represented the Vatican at the United Nations, advocating for policies that reflect Catholic teachings on issues such as poverty, human trafficking, and nuclear disarmament. His ability to articulate the Church's position in a way that resonates with secular and religious audiences alike underscores his exceptional leadership. As the Catholic Church faces an era of rapid change and increasing polarization, Cardinal Parolin's measured approach to leadership could be exactly what the Church needs. He has consistently emphasized the importance of unity and dialogue, aligning closely with Pope Francis's vision of a Church that builds bridges rather than walls. Parolin's diplomatic background also equips him to address internal divisions within the Church, with debates over Pope Francis's reforms, including his emphasis on synodality and inclusivity, tensions have risen among more conservative and progressive factions. 
Perilin's ability to mediate disputes and find common ground could be a stabilizing force during a potentially tumultuous period of transition. While Perilin's achievements are impressive, his tenure as Secretary of State has not been without controversy. Critics of the Vatican-China Agreement, for example, argue that it concedes too much to the Chinese government and undermines the independence of the Church. Others question whether his diplomatic focus might overshadow the pastoral dimensions of the papacy, which require a deep connection to everyday Catholics. Nevertheless, Perlin's defenders argue that his pragmatism reflects the realities of leading a global church in the 21st century. His ability to navigate complex issues with grace and intelligence makes him a compelling candidate for the papacy, especially in an era where the church's global presence requires careful stewardship. But let's talk a bit more about the other two candidates, the charismatic bridge builder. One of the most vibrant and inspiring figures in the Catholic Church today is Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. Known affectionately as Asia's Pope Francis, Cardinal Tagle embodies many of the same qualities that have made Pope Francis a beloved global leader. Humility, charisma, and a deep connection to ordinary people. As a prominent voice for the marginalized in a bridge between cultures, Cardinal Tagli's name is frequently mentioned as a strong contender for the papacy. Cardinal Tagli earned the moniker Asia's Pope Francis for good reason. Like Pope Francis, he has a reputation for being approachable and down to earth. His ability to connect with people on a personal level, whether in a packed cathedral or a remote village, has endeared him to Catholics across the globe. This comparison goes beyond his demeanor. Cardinal Tag Lee shares Pope Francis's focus on pastoral care, inclusivity, and service to the marginalized. He has consistently emphasized the church's mission to serve the poor and has called for leaders to practice humility and compassion. His speeches often carry an emotional, relatable quality, blending theological depth with personal stories that resonate deeply with his audiences. One of Cardinal Tag Lee's most remarkable strengths is his connection to young people. In a church grappling with declining youth engagement, his ability to inspire and energize younger generations is invaluable. He has long championed youth programs and events, including his active participation in World Youth Day. His dynamic presence and heartfelt messages often leave a lasting impression on young Catholics who see in him a leader who understands their struggles and aspirations. Acknowledging the importance of modern technology, Cardinal Tagle has embraced social media and other digital platforms to reach a broader audience. His videos and messages, often filled with warmth and humor, make the faith accessible to a generation that craves authenticity. Through these efforts, Tagle has positioned himself as a beacon of hope for young Catholics, demonstrating that faith can remain relevant in an ever-changing world. Cardinal Tagle's heart for the poor and marginalized has defined much of his ministry. Growing up in the Philippines, a country with significant poverty, he witnessed firsthand the struggles of ordinary people. This experience profoundly shaped his worldview and fueled his passion for social justice. As Archbishop of Manila, Tagli became a powerful advocate for the homeless, the hungry, and those displaced by natural disasters. He didn't just preach about service, he lived it. Stories abound of him washing the feet of the poor, visiting slums, and personally delivering aid to those in need. His hands-on approach mirrors Pope Francis's vision of a church that is poor and for the poor. In his role as president of Caritas Internationalis, the church's global charitable arm, Cardinal Tagle has expanded his advocacy to the international stage. He has spoken out about issues such as climate change and migration. He has urged the global community to treat migrants and refugees with dignity, framing the issue as both a humanitarian and moral imperative. With Asia being one of the fastest growing regions for Catholicism, Cardinal Tagle's leadership carries immense potential for the church's future. As a Filipino, he represents the vibrant faith of a region where Catholicism continues to thrive, despite challenges such as religious pluralism and poverty. Asia's unique cultural and spiritual landscape requires a leader who can navigate its complexities while fostering unity and dialogue. Tagle's ability to engage with diverse communities, both Catholic and non-Catholic, makes him an ideal ambassador for the Church in this region. His leadership could help strengthen the Church's presence in Asia while fostering greater understanding between cultures and religions. Furthermore, his focus on young people aligns perfectly with the demographic realities of Asia, home to some of the world's youngest populations. By empowering the youth and championing inclusivity, 
Tagli could play a major role in shaping a church that speaks to the aspirations of future generations. Cardinal Tagli's potential to become the next pope lies in his ability to balance tradition with innovation, humility with charisma, and theology with action. His leadership style reflects the qualities Pope Francis has emphasized, pastoral care, outreach to the margins, and a willingness to adapt to the needs of the times. However, his candidacy is not without challenges. Critics argue that his emotional and compassionate style may lack the administrative rigor required to manage the global church. Others point to his relatively young age. At 67, he could preside over a lengthy papacy, which might deter those seeking a shorter-term leader. Still, for many, Cardinal Tag Lee represents a vision of hope and renewal for the Catholic Church. His ability to inspire the young, uplift the marginalized, and extend the Church's influence in Asia makes him a compelling choice, champion of justice in the Global South. Among the prominent names in discussions about the next Pope, Cardinal Peter Turkson shines as a powerful symbol of the Catholic Church's global presence and its commitment to justice, environmental stewardship, and advocacy for the marginalized. As a voice for the Global South and a trusted advisor in critical Vatican departments, Turkson represents a unique blend of tradition and progressive action, making him a strong contender for the papacy. Cardinal Turkson's career has been defined by his unwavering dedication to justice and equality. Born in Ghana in 1948, he became the first cardinal from his country in 2003 and has since emerged as a leading advocate for the Church's teachings on social justice. Turkson has consistently called for action on poverty, inequality, and the exploitation of vulnerable communities, particularly in Africa. He has spoken out against the economic systems that perpetuate global injustices and has urged world leaders to prioritize human dignity over profit. This commitment to justice aligns closely with Pope Francis's focus on addressing systemic inequalities and advocating for the oppressed. One of Turkson's most notable contributions has been his leadership in environmental advocacy. As president of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, now part of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, he played a pivotal role in shaping the groundbreaking encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis's urgent call to care for our common home. Turkson's expertise and passion were instrumental in crafting this document, which emphasizes the moral dimensions of climate change and environmental degradation. Turkson's work highlights the interconnectedness of social justice and environmental stewardship, making him a key figure in the Church's efforts to address global challenges. His leadership reflects a vision of the Church as a proactive force for good in the world, one that listens to the cries of the earth and the poor. A prominent African cardinal, Turkson symbolizes the Church's increasing focus on the Global South, where Catholicism is experiencing remarkable growth. In regions like Africa, the faith continues to thrive, with vibrant communities and a youthful population fueling its expansion. Turkson's African heritage carries profound significance in this context. His potential papacy would mark a historic milestone, giving the Church a leader who embodies the experiences and aspirations of the Global South. By elevating a leader like Turkson, the Church would send a powerful message about its priorities in the 21st century, demonstrating a willingness to embrace perspectives from beyond its traditional European base. Cardinal Turkson's extensive experience in key Vatican roles has prepared him for the complexities of papal leadership. As head of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development, he oversaw initiatives related to justice, peace, human rights, migration, and environmental protection. In this capacity, Turkson managed diverse and challenging issues, from advocating for sustainable development to addressing the plight of refugees and displaced persons. His ability to lead such a multifaceted office demonstrates his administrative skills and his capacity to balance competing priorities while staying rooted in the Church's mission. Turkson's approach reflects the collaborative style that Pope Francis has championed. He has emphasized listening to marginalized voices and fostering dialogue among diverse stakeholders. This focus on inclusivity and consultation is a hallmark of Francis's papacy and would likely define Turkson's leadership style as well. While Turkson's leadership style may differ from Pope Francis's more charismatic approach, his commitment to the same principles ensures continuity with the current papacy. His vision of a church that serves as a moral compass and a voice for the voiceless mirrors the direction Francis has charted. Cardinal Peter Turkson represents a vision of the church that is deeply engaged with the world's most pressing issues. His dedication to justice, environmental action, and the Global South positions him as a transformative figure who could guide the Catholic Church into a new era, 
But who out of these three candidates is actually the future leader? Inside Whisper. The news arrived five minutes ago. Pope Francis just broke silence and revealed the next pope. In a rare and candid moment during a private gathering with senior Vatican officials, Pope Francis spoke openly about his vision for the Church's future and named the cardinal he believes embodies the values necessary to guide the Catholic Church in the coming decades. According to insiders, out of the three candidates, Pope Francis chose Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. This revelation, while not an official endorsement, has already sparked intense discussion and speculation. By singling out Tagle, Pope Francis has effectively placed him at the forefront of succession talks, highlighting his qualities as the ideal leader for a church in transition. Pope Francis reportedly praised Cardinal Tagli's ability to connect deeply with people from all walks of life, particularly the youth and the marginalized. Known affectionately as Asia's Pope Francis, Tagli's humility, charisma, and pastoral approach mirror many of the qualities that have defined Pope Francis's own papacy. During the private discussion, Pope Francis emphasized the need for the next pope to embody a spirit of openness, compassion, and service, qualities he sees reflected in Tagle's leadership. He spoke of a church that must continue to bridge divides, both within its walls and in the wider world. In his remarks, Francis is said to have described Tagle as a shepherd with the heart of Christ, someone uniquely equipped to carry forward the church's mission of inclusivity and outreach. Pope Francis also acknowledged the growing importance of Asia in the global church. As the first Asian cardinal to be named a frontrunner for the papacy, Tagli represents a profound shift in the church's center of gravity. In his comments, Francis reportedly noted Tagli's ability to represent the vibrancy of Catholicism in Asia while also appealing to Catholics worldwide. Tagli's work as head of Caritas Internationalis, the church's global charitable arm, was cited as a testament to his ability to lead on a global scale. Through this role, he has addressed critical issues such as poverty, migration, and climate change, embodying the Church's commitment to social justice. One of the key reasons Pope Francis identified Tagle as a standout candidate is his connection to young people. In today's rapidly changing world, where younger generations often feel alienated from traditional institutions, Tagle has demonstrated a unique ability to inspire and engage. His use of social media and modern communication tools has made the faith accessible to younger audiences, while his genuine warmth and relatability have earned him widespread admiration. Pope Francis also highlighted Tagle's tireless advocacy for the marginalized. Whether ministering to the poor in Manila or speaking out for refugees and migrants, Tagle has consistently prioritized the church's mission to serve the least of these. His leadership style, which emphasizes humility and direct engagement with those in need, aligns perfectly with Pope Francis's vision of a church that is poor and for the poor. While Vatican insiders were taken aback by Pope Francis's forthright comments, many see them as a continuation of his legacy of openness. It's worth noting that Pope Francis stopped short of officially endorsing Tagli or making any formal declarations about the next papacy. However, his remarks carry immense weight. The implications of Pope Francis's statement are profound. By identifying Cardinal Tagli as his preferred successor, Francis is signaling the direction he believes the church should take after his tenure. Do you agree with his thoughts, though? Let us know in the comments.